fans of Warhammer 40,000, the ever-evolving war game, and good visual design principles. Thank you very much for joining me for a video where I'm going to share a few thoughts about the upcoming 9th edition Warhammer 40,000. Now, a number of you have asked me to give some thoughts and views on this upcoming rule set, much in the same way as I did in some detail in the run up to the release of 8th edition back in 2017. As happened three years ago, the Warhammer community team have been sharing snippets of the upcoming rule set on the website, and I'm sure in other locations as well, they're active all over the shop these days. And I've been looking at these and regarding them with some concern. My concern stems from two perspectives, both linked to the same theme. And this is around how the rules have been written and how they have been presented. And in particular here, I am referring to the core rules that have been shared. So for example, the lookout sir rule or the dense cover rule. In the main, rules that have been shared for like unit specific rules, they look fine. Profile tables look fine. You know, all good. But on these core rules, which are, when we think about them, what are going to drive the player's games, these are really important. And I'm very concerned with how they've been written and presented. I think the visual design that has also gone behind presenting these is very bad. That combined with some rules that are also poorly written causes me a great deal of concern for how easy this rule set is going to be for people to digest. Now, I'm not a big fan of super simple war games, not by any shot. Eighth edition was a very simple war game, or is, you know, it's still here. And in general, I tend to be more interested in more complex games. So sticking in the sphere of Games Workshop's productions, you've got the Horace Hosey rules, a more crunchier rule set than that, if you excuse the term crunchier, will be Adeptus Titanicus from Specialist Games. Outside of that, I played all sorts of games of varying complexity over the years, and some of which have been really quite technical. You know, when you talk about World War I naval combat war games, you know, Blumenek, some of those are, they're very, very crunchy indeed. I'm not coming at this from a position of not liking complicated rules. However, I am coming at it from the position of someone who knows a bit about visual design principles. I'm going to share some of those concerns. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a little opener. We're going to give you a principle to consider. I'm then going to go through a series of screenshots of the individual rules that are being shared by the Warhammer community team. And I'm going to try read them to you. And as I do that, I would like you to think if they are well written and understandable. And when I read them to you, I will read according to how they are punctuated as best I can. So if there are commas, and full stops. I will account for that in natural pauses with how I read. However, if that punctuation is absent, I will read as if it is absent because that is how people's minds see it. So that is what I'm going to do. The food for thought. Now, in terms of visual design principles, well, there's lots of good information out there, but I've got one particular book in my collection that I really like, and it's this book here. And it's called Visual Explanations, Images and Quantities, Evidence and Narrative. And it is written by Professor R. Tufday, and I believe it's Tufday. Some I have heard it pronounced Tuft, but I think it's Tufday. And he is a professor of statistics, I believe, at Yale University out in the States. So a clever chap. And this, if you are interested in visual design through history, this is an excellent book and I highly recommend it. What I'd like to show you is just one piece of information or one example from this book, which is on page 65. And here we are. So if we zoom in on this, right. And I'd like to talk about this piece of text here and this description here. Below is a sinister piece of disinformation from a billboard advertising cigarettes. A thick frame clutters words of warning by activating the negative white spaces between word and box, just as a waving hand masks small moves of the fingers in switching coins, i.e. the magician. And if we look at the example, and we shall zoom in a little closer, we can see here, it says, Surgeon General's warning, smoking causes lung cancer, heart disease, emphysema, and may complicate pregnancy. 
At first glance, you would look at that and think, oh yeah, that's in block capitals, it's uh, easy to read. But actually, it is, as Tough Day points out, it is a piece of sinister misinformation. What the advertisers have done here, they've put everything in block capitals, which makes it harder to read. They've put a big, thick block around it, that also makes it harder to read. And they've underlined the warning, again, making it harder to read because it puts a load of visual clutter around the words. So although it's correctly punctuated, to see this in brief is quite hard. And if you have ever seen cigarette packaging or indeed any tobacco packaging back from the 80s, 90s, and probably even 2000s, you'll be familiar with health, health warnings like this. If you were to look at a packet today of, say, cigarettes, you would see that standard formatting is used. We don't have this confusing amount of visual clutter to distract people from the warning. The warning is very simple to read. And I'd like you to bear this in mind when I show you the 8th edition rule snippets and read them to you. Think to yourself, have they been laid out in a way that is easy for people to read and digest? Interesting stuff. Look out, sir. Models cannot target a unit that contains any character models with a wounds characteristic of 9 or less with a ranged weapon while that unit is within 3 inches of any other friendly vehicle or monster unit, or while it is within 3 inches of any other friendly units that have 3 or more models, unless that character unit is both visible to the firing model and it is the closest enemy unit to the firing model. The maelstrom of battle makes it difficult to pick out such individuals. Ignore other enemy character models with a wounds characteristic of 9 or less when determining if a target is the closest enemy unit to the firing model. So that's not too bad, although the sentences are far too long in terms of the actual written English. In terms of the visual design, well, you've got this block of text presentation, and it would be much better if it was split out into standard page formatting for, say, an A4 book, and if it had sentence spacing and probably even a paragraph spacing in that. Big guns never tire. A vehicle or monster model can make attacks with ranged weapons even when its unit is within engagement range of enemy units. But it can only make such attacks against enemy units that it is within engagement range of. In such circumstances, vehicles and monster models can target an enemy unit even if other friendly units are within engagement range of the same enemy unit. Note that if a vehicle or monster unit has more than one range weapon, you can still choose to target units that are not within engagement range of a firing model's unit, but they will only be able to make the attacks with that weapon if all enemy units within engagement range of the firing model's unit have been destroyed when you come to resolve those attacks. In addition, when a vehicle or monster model shoots a heavy weapon, subtract one from the hit rolls when resolving that weapon's attacks, while any enemy units are within engagement range of that model's unit. So, in terms of writing, again, the sentences are way too long here, and this nil needs breaking up to be more legible from a point of view of how it's worded. The visual design is even worse than the last example. You have a great big block of text, there's no sentence spacing or paragraphs, and you have block capitals, lower case or standard case, and then you also have bold and standard emphasis text all mixed in together, which for me, I don't know, that doesn't work for me. And this would be far more effective if everything was kept lowercase, it was sentence and paragraph spaced, some of the sentences were broken up, and the block capitals, vehicle or monster, they wouldn't need to be in block capitals. They could be standard case, but just in bold. Light cover. When an attack made with a ranged weapon wounds a model that is receiving the benefits of cover from this terrain feature, add one to the saving throw made against that attack. Invulnerable saves are not affected. Heavy cover. When an attack made with a melee weapon wounds a model that is receiving the benefits of cover from this terrain feature, 
Add one to the saving throw made against that attack, unless the model making the attack made a charge move this turn. Invulnerable saving throws are not affected. So those aren't too bad, and although there's no sentence spacing present here, the fact that there are two separate rules means that the writers have been forced to split it up, and you know, it's a lot easier to read. So this is better, but based on the previous examples we've looked at, I think that's an accident of the length of these rules as opposed to good visual design. Obscuring. If this terrain feature is at least five inches in height, then models cannot see through or over this terrain feature. This means that one model is not visible to another if you cannot draw a straight line, one millimetre in thickness, between them without it passing through or over any part of this terrain feature. The height of a terrain feature is measured from the highest point on that terrain feature. Models that are on or within this terrain feature can be seen and targeted normally. Aircraft models and models with a wounds characteristic of 18 or more are visible and can be targeted even if this terrain feature is in between it and the firing model, but the reverse is not true. So again, this isn't too bad. Actually. This is in terms of reading, uh, the written English, this is okay. There's a decent amount of sentence breaks up there. And inconsistently with the previous rules, they've put a paragraph break in. If everything was written like this, it would be a lot more legible. It's still not ideal. I don't like how it's in shortened sentence structure, but it is better. Overwatch. Certain rules enable units to fight Overwatch at an enemy unit before it can charge. If an enemy unit declares a charge that targets one or more units from your army that have such a rule, each of those units can fire Overwatch before the charge roll is made. A unit cannot fire Overwatch if there are any enemy units within an engagement range of it. Overwatch is resolved like a normal shooting attack albeit one resolved in the charge phase, and uses all the normal rules, except that an unmodified hit roll of 6 is always required for a successful hit roll, irrespective of the firing model's ballistic skill or any hit roll modifiers. In addition, when a model fires Overwatch, it does so at the charging unit. Any rule that states a unit cannot be targeted unless it is the closest target, e.g. Lookout Sir, does not apply when firing Overwatch. I think. With this one, so it has the same issue as a couple of other examples in that you've got this block of text. While it's properly punctuated, there's no paragraph breaks, which would help make this easy to read and digest. It's also a little bit wordy as well. Me and a couple of other people rewrote this in a better structured, in terms of the visual representation part of it, but also making it a bit less wordy as well. I thought reading better and more easier to understand. So yes, that's Overwatch. Dense cover. If this terrain feature is at least three inches in height, then subtract one from the hit roll when resolving an attack with the ranged weapon, unless you can draw straight lines, one millimeter in thickness, to every part of at least one model's base or hull in the target unit from a single point on the attacking model's base or hull, without any of those lines passing over or through any part of any terrain feature with this trait. Models that are on or within an area terrain feature with this trait do not suffer this penalty if the only terrain feature these lines pass over or through is the terrain feature that the attacking model is on or within. Models within 3 inches of an obstacle terrain feature with this trait do not suffer this penalty if the only terrain feature these lines pass over or through is the terrain feature that the attacking model is within 3 inches of. The height of a terrain feature is measured from the highest point on that terrain feature. Phew, well, goodness me, um, what to say about this one? So we've got the same issues again with the general block of text presentation. That does not help reading this. I think this is really poorly written. The sentences are way too long and lacking punctuation. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I kind of get what the rule means. This is probably like the third or fourth time I've read it, in all fairness. But uh, it's just it's just so badly presented and so badly written, this one. And the reason that I'm saying that is because I'm only holding GW's writers to their own standards here. You know, when you look at how the core rules for 8th edition were written, they were very straightforward, I thought. I believe there's an attempt here to 
increase the specificity of the rules wording and thereby avoid confusion or uncertainty with how these are supposed to work. However, at the same time, they've made a visual design error in how they've presented that. It feels like they've upped the amount of description of these rules at the same time as they've decreased the quality of their visual presentation. So yeah, that's a bit of a headache to read that one, definitely. So a few concluding thoughts then. That's probably not the video you would have expected to those of you who asked me, what do I think of ninth edition rules so far? However, I think it's an important point to make here because how rules are written and presented really does impact how easy they are to pick up and play with. Uh, you know, eighth edition has been a huge success, probably in a big part due to the models, but also from a gaming perspective, a lot of people like it. And I think it has great mass appeal. Ninth edition is not going to go down as well as 8th with many new customers and many returning customers who 8th brought in. And for a company that turned over more than quarter of a billion pounds last year, I do not understand why they can't employ some proper technical writers or equivalent to better just to write these rules in a clear, concise, and specific manner. Because what they've shared here, and I'm presuming this is the final product, I, I don't think it's up to scratch, and certainly not for a company of GW standing. I strongly suspect we are going to see a lot of community rewrites of 9th edition rules when it gets released to address these very points. And then when we're thinking about accessibility of the games as well, these rules are absolutely terribly written and presented from a point of view of anyone with less than excellent reading skills or abilities. And anyone who has probably even mild dyslexia is going to have a tough time with this. And I know gamers who have anything from mild to quite severe dyslexia. And rules presented and written like this are not friendly to those people. And let's not forget who are otherwise intelligent and clever people, but they just struggle to read information when it's presented in certain ways. So there are some thoughts on 9th edition rules, and in particular how they are written and presented as opposed to the actual mechanics. To be quite honest at the moment, I can't really get my head around the mechanics of it, because this just whole thing in my mind about how they've been written is just at the front of it, and that's what I want to address. That's a lot of things to think about. Don't forget, if you are interested in information display, the book by Professor Tufte is excellent and well worth picking up if you can find a copy. Well worth it indeed. As always, I'd like to hear your thoughts and observations in the comment section. Please do share those. And in particular, if you're one of the people who does have some form of difficulty with reading written material, what do you think of how Games Workshop is writing and presenting the ninth edition rules? I'll be very interested to hear that. But other than that, I'd just like to say thank you very much for watching. I'll speak to you next time. And goodbye.